Okay, so you're... Are we ready? <laughs> I guess. Okay, so you're... We're gonna. I'm in charge of cold opens. Yes. Yes. Oh, I thought you twisted this. It looked twisted. For no, a why would I twist that? All right, so I'm in charge of cold openings. C. We've been watching Netflix. C. We are going to play Bird Box Knitting Edition. Oh! Okay, so... This has, this has holes in it. You cannot cheat. But they're lovely holes. Yeah, that may, that may be. But if you cheat, I'm bringing out this... Um, I don't even know what this is. Acrylic store-bought... Ugh. Yeah, Old Navy. So if you cheat, I'm going to knot this over your head. <laughs> it, get, it gets the scarf? Yes. Okay. So, all right. So wait, wait, wait. What, the, what's the challenge? The challenge is... I don't know. You just said... You have to cast it. on with okay. some of your thread there. With my little it's called. needles. It's called yarn. <laughs> it's called wool yarn. Now, do, can I put this somewhere or do I have to find this and stuff? You have to find it. <laughs> okay, okay. Be glad you're not having to be strapped to a rope and go around the house. <laughs> How did they use the bathroom in that movie? Because you're always paranoid. And then you feel that it's have no a, different than going to dark, going to the bathroom to, in the dark. If you have an intimate moment, you're kind of like, what was that noise? Like, intimate. Not one. Not, I don't know what the bathroom's like for you. Okay. So, what, how many, what do I have to do? Just cast on? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's a candle. Oh, I see. You moved it. You see? <laughs> no, no, I don't see. Wait, is there anything I can knock over? Is there anything worth money anywhere? No. Is it in your hand? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. God, you're very needy. And what if you were doing in the, this in the woods by yourself? <laughs> well, going to ask the trees for help? I would. Those like those evil trees in the Wizard of Oz. I. I are you with me? <laughs> I don't. Can the people watching see this? Oh, here we go. Okay. I got to pull from the center. I can't. Is this? I don't. Where's the end? Did I do it the wrong way? Okay, this. That's not right. <laughs> right I'm just going to start here. That's a mess. Okay. I don't think I would. One? No, that'd be two. How would I know? Because I, I just did a two, I think. No, wait, did I just do two twice? Three, four. Three. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't know if I'm hitting the second one. I think I am. Am I doing it? I, what are you going to ten? I think that no, something felt weird there. I think I'm rushing. Count them. Count them. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it's fingering weight, so nine, ten. Can I look now? No, now you gotta do. You gotta do your next <laughs> thing. Oh, we have a show to do. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. Well, something's gonna be happening. <laughs> happening. I can hear the click clack of the needles. I can't. Okay, I think we should just start the show. No, see, <laughs> you wouldn't make it a half an hour in the woods. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be really knitting in the woods if I'm running for my life. You're not having to run for your life. You've got a thing around your head. <laughs> Very true. Okay. Two. Three. I can't do it at this time. All right. Are you tapping out? Yeah, I'm tapping out. 
Okay. All right. Can I see what I did? Yeah, let's see what you did. You... <gasps> but I did cast on. Those are pretty good. Is that 10? Two, four, six, eight. Somehow I got eight. And where's the beginning? Oh, the beginning's over here. It happens. It does it? I tried. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you look like you're wearing a gray pussy hat. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. While you get your comb, your comb over fixed. <laughs> Welcome to Fiber Hustle. My name is Chip. My name is Aaron. I like to sew. I like to knit and crochet. And you like to watch. You do. Fiber Hustle season, season two, two, episode, episode four. T- is it four? Yeah. We've been gone for a couple minutes. It's episode four. Well, I don't know about all that. Because the last one was in December, and we were going to have a Christmas episode. Then you know things just happen. So, welcome back. We missed you. Yes, we have. And thanks for everybody saying, where have you guys been? We actually Where's talk about our, uh, the podcast and people that we watch. And we have been watching so many um, podcasts ourselves and enjoying all the hard work you're doing. But not so much uh, the hard work we've been doing. We've been doing stuff, but not... Like, yeah. We played... We didn't watch Money in December, but we kind of caught up. Money in December. We kind of caught up. Um Here's what happened since our last podcast. Chip's sick one week. Aaron's sick the other week. I was sick like two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. I got sick again. I was already sick in October. Uh, For my birthday, we flew out to Vegas for a couple days. And I know we have some viewers and some other podcasters who live in Vegas. I'm sorry we did not reach out, but we were with a group of people and we're kind of like, hey, we should even like reach out to Will because we know he's here. And people are like, wait, it's your yeah, birthday. Yeah, well, carrots, have carrots, carrots. Yeah. <laughs> we I won a thousand bucks. Yes. Cash out. I only won. No, that was oh, my wait. first time ever being. I won about 400. Basically, if you go to Vegas, go to any Game of Thrones machine. Game of Thrones. But the one at the Cosmopolitan where we stayed is the one that treated us very well the first two days. This last day, not so much. But it was good. We had a good time in Vegas. It was his we first did. time. My only my second time. Next time we go, we'll do we'll try to meet up with Will and try to win more money or something like that. Yeah, but I I mean like when we were going, you said that look, we're only gonna need two days, three days max. Yeah, you don't want to be in Vegas that long. I had never been. I'm like, well, if we're gonna go, let's just stay, you know, like four days. And you were right. How often do I say that? Yeah. You were right. <laughs> yes. Two days, that's all we needed. Then we were gonna podcast, then we didn't think we were doing any Christmas things. So we had two Christmas parties that were last minute. So we're like, oh, we have to make some gifts. So we did that. Then we're going to well, record on, a couple. So, what? Well, what? Well, what? Well, what is the face? Well, I was going to finish the sentence. Well, no, you were breezing by Christmas gifts. I made Christmas gifts. Yes. Are we going to talk about that? I thought we were going to talk about that. And you made that? Oh. Okay. Unless you want to... We can go into what we made. Well, no. So I made... Yes. No, okay. No. We're going to talk about Christmas gifts of what we made. All right. So... <laughs> we're back. <laughs> what if this is as good as it gets? <laughs> All right. So I made uh, two pillows... And we'll show you a cl- uh, picture of them. Uh, they were for two sisters who are friends of ours. Um, not our sisters, but they happen to be sisters. And sisters. Sorry. I embroidered um, four patches. So I made uh, the four panels and then I did two embroideries per pillow. And that was my first time ever working with uh, the embroidery unit uh, on my Bernina, and I'm telling you what, there is a learning curve. So it was fun. It was a good exercise. I learned, you know, how to get the 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 hoop right and like getting the settings. <clears throat> I didn't really learn about like precision um, uh, placement of the the embroidered patch, but maybe maybe I should go to a class on that. Well, the sewing expo is coming up. Do they have classes? Uh, they might, they might, they might, yeah. Uh-huh. And 
One thing that I really thought I would do better at was just the speed. I thought, oh, it's going to go really quick. No. Every time I had the the speed cranked up, it, the thread kept breaking. So I'm wondering if it was because it was time for the annual servicing. Mm-hmm. Like, even when I was sewing, my thread kept breaking, and as soon as I had it server, serviced a couple weeks ago, no no thread breaking. So I'm wondering if that had anything to do with it. Interesting. We did post some stuff to Instagram, so I don't know if we still have that video. We would show how the sheep was being made, but it was pretty cool. I had my eye on those sheep for, like, two years, and I think the the each one was, like, four bucks for the... Do you call it, what do you call it? You don't call it a pattern, do you? Or is it? it I guess it's an embroidery pattern. You know, it's just uh-huh. it's just That's a little uh, pattern file that you put into the machine and let it do its thing. And it's funny because I don't think I, I I liked being able to accomplish the end result, but sitting there and just watching the hoop is to me it's not enough involvement. It's too it's too much hands off. It's not my passion it was a nice little touch though i think but. yeah and i know eric he loves 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 to embroider i mean like he's he's gone and made investment into it yeah and he's got the dream machine is that it is that so he's got the dream machine i think he also has a brother um like a big boy oh really J- just an embroidery machine well I still have to try to get eric, him on the show we're still waiting for you to come on to the show yeah you live like you 25 big, minutes away you big jerk yeah uh, I know we still owe our friend Sam a pillow. So, Sam, if you're watching, we owe you something more of the skull related category, probably. For yeah. Sam. But yeah. Skull we, candy. We didn't leave her out. I made some more octopus for my portion of Christmas gift. I gave our friend Sam the purple octopus with the green alien eyes. And then for Patricia and Deb, I gave them. Blue octopus with green eyes, which turned out to be more of a Seahawks theme. Oh, wait. Patricia and Deb and our friend Gator. So I gave him a Seahawks toilet cozy. No, wasn't his the one that was a little bit... um, He was not typical. No, I gave Sam the not typical one. It had an extra... It had a little... And... Tentacle? Tentacle. Okay, sorry. I don't... I need to do more research on octopus. But yeah, they enjoyed them. They love them. They're probably in the trash right now. But we'll see. Hopefully, I'm going to come over and do surprise visits and see if they're there. But yeah, so we did that. (laughs) That was fun. Well, actually, we did. I mean, like we held to our honor. We did not exchange Christmas gifts. Well, okay, true. We didn't exchange Christmas gifts. But we like around the end of November, we got stuff. For each other. We which did? Which I'll be talking about mine later. Oh, well. Okay. You're sitting on a secret. I, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, uh, every, every queen needs a throne. <laughs> yes. And so I got for, um, my, because Aaron, ha- he, he is a drummer. He also likes to guitar. Is it this way or this way? This way. This way. And so... He has a throne. This is my drum throne, my pork pie. Very cushy, very awesome. Had it for many years, which Chip decided to kind of steal about a year ago. Because I, it's like perfect because I can, I mean, it really Swivels. adjusts high and low. All you do is turn the seat and it's a big seat. It's, it's generous. <laughs> it's... And so I, I, so he got me one for... Um, not Christmas. It was back in November. Yeah, I kind of wanted my drum thrown back. And yeah. he's like, this thing is great. Yeah, yeah. And so comfy. I got one that matches my Bernina. Look, is that like crushed velvet? It's really lovely. And so it's great because it just, it's a nice, generous seat. And I like the fact that it doesn't have the back. So it keeps me... Your core. It, it keeps me without just slumping back in the in the chair, mm-hmm. and I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. But yeah, pork pie, drum thrones, also good for sewing or 
quilting yeah. or whatever. Get yourself a throne. Actually, I want another one. That's on you. It, I would love to have one for upstairs, one for downstairs. Tax time is coming, so we'll see what happens <gasps> there. Can I get this one again? If we go to Vegas and play Game of Thrones, we can get five. Wow. Ooh. No, it's it, I, I do. I, I truly love, and I kid you not, the color is almost spot on. That was lucky. Um, you, I don't know if I should talk about it now or wait until I show what I made with it. I'll just do both. The show is all over today. So I, from Charles, I got these Lika uh, crochet hooks. Boom. And so far, I've only made a couple things with them, but I'm really digging them. Um, you do? Yeah. I, do. I don't think we ever talked about them. One thing I do like about these, I'm showing you the big ones so you can kind of see it. Um, they actually have a point. So when you're getting in there, it kind of literally... Sorry. Pierces. That pierces through the yarn. Let me see if I can show it underneath the GoPro. But yeah, see that point? That's kind of genius. Like everything I've had, I've there's probably other stuff out there, but I've ordered some like last few years, this, I don't know, no, cheaper crochet needles. So maybe this is technology is on a lot of things I just didn't know about. But they're super smooth. They feel great. Um, obviously, since they're kind of wood, there's not much cushion for the thumb and stuff. But I didn't have any problem with it. Comes with a little pocket if you want to put some like stitch markers and things on there. Really nice carrying case. But I do like these. The first thing I made with them is I made a a big Mercer muff. As you know, I call these things Mercer muff. It's uh, I did some my favorite crochet crochet stitch is the half double crochet, and I made this for a viewer friend who made me the meow set last year, which was the kitty hat and the kitty tail scarf for Bobby Sue in Port Graham, Alaska. I feel bad because I made this in the middle of December, but I wanted to show it on the podcast. But yeah, I'm going to send this out to her. It was made with Lion Brand's homespun yarn. And love. And love. <laughs> and lots of Christmas movie watching. So uh, I can't find the tag for it, so I'm not sure what color it is, but it is blue. And one thing about this yarn, as most of you have used it know, it's very frustrating. That's why whatever you do with it, go up many hook sizes, whatever it suggests. I think it suggests like a four millimeter or something like that. But I think I did this on a 5.5, which is usually my standard crochet hook go-to. So yeah, um, if she's watching, this will be coming your way. And hopefully uh, you can kind of do a double wrap with it, where you can just wear it like this. And... You can wear it around Port Graham and Alaska. All your friends will admire you because it's from Fiber Hustle. Nice. Yeah. So, but yeah, <coughs> try these crochet hooks. Uh, so far, I am enjoying them. I want to do a little bit more work just to see if that stays up. Stays up? The review, like the high marks I'm giving it in my head. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to come down low. No. Yeah. But that basically that kind of wrap up what we've been doing, what we made, what we got, and now it brings us to today. Today, I've been feeling a little sick today. <laughs> and I was just sick two weeks ago again, so I don't know what's happening. In this yeah, house. it was like my nose was just burning, and I've been sneezing all day. I think it's children of parents who have children at work, and maybe somebody told me I excessively wash my hands too much, which doesn't make sense to me, but. Keep going. Whatever. Keep keep washing them hands. Keep washing your hands. All right. With that, shall we move into... Uh, you made that? Yeah. Do you want to... I think you are the showstopper. I am not a showstopper. This, you had some really I nice have stuff. two things. Which are amazing. Okay. So, uh, has it been a week or so? Since? I finally finished Aaron's... Christmas quilt. We were focused on everybody else. Yeah. That we kind of were late on each other's. Yeah. So I did Aaron's quilt on uh, Hunter Star. And. Do you want me to stand up? Yeah, let's just stand up. Hi. All right. So. And 
It turned out lovely. I love it. So on this one, all I really I used AccuQuilt to cut out my pieces, and then I actually all this is Joanne's fabric, so it wasn't anything uh, terribly expensive. And for the quilting, I just used um, actually I used my domestic, my Bernie and seven eighty. And I used the walking foot and I just did straight lines. It was like I wasn't going to go to great lengths quilting it. Especially I didn't want to take away from uh, the, the geometric shape of it as what it already is. So you can see we give it a, um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a kind of confetti. And I'm really proud of you. You didn't get any schmutz on it yet. He, he, Rudeness. He tends to get food on, on things. But I yeah. like it. I'm very satisfied. I'm very warm. So, yeah. So, this is going to make it... He's going to have to use this until... Um, the winter is over? No. Well, until I make your next blanket. But, um, what was leading up to it... So, we were... as I, I Once I had all the pieces cut, then I tried out different arrangements... So, like, just by turning and um, the orientation, this is what I had and is actually in the quilt now. But by turning it, you could have all red on the outside, all green on the inside, or the white on the outside. So there was that version. No, sorry, this is what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And then... Different versions. That one was, this one's very interesting though. What is that called? Uh, or is that a name? I don't know. It kind of looks like an alien spaceship. No, uh, actually no. This, this is the crown of thorns. Okay. So with these going out like this, that's your crown of thorns. Okay. And then you have... Oh, there's another side of we already did that. We already did that. Okay. Then we have this, which is kind of the reverse crown of thorns the, on the negative. And then it could have been ha have more of like a um, pineapple look to it. It's not exactly a pineapple, but it's kind of that thing. So it's fun. Like this hunter's star, you know, it's just not, it's just not um, this. It's really just whatever way that you place your your orientation, you get a different effect. And then depending on if you do, like, I did um, three colors, but you could have two colors. You could have four colors. I've seen lots of different variations. And just have fun with it. That looks really good. I love it. Yep. And I'm glad you like it. Thank you. All right. So then the next one was in my backlog. So I have this sucker. This. And you know what? I'm trying to remember. Um, it's it's not an orange peel. I forget what this is called. Oh. I don't know. Rob Rob um, Rob Peter PayPal. Do you want to show it underneath first before we open it? Well. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's probably easier. So with this one. Um, it's going to be hard to tell, but there's actually a circle quilted here. And there's another right here. So in the center, I quilted all these. So this is like, what did we end up saying? Like 300? Oh, there was 365 yes. circles on this entire thing that I... Turn up, hold it. That I um, quilted. Now, the, the one thing that was really... Yeah, we'll, we'll take it out. One thing that was really crazy is that with the quilting, every friggin' circle is a start and stop. So I had to start my stitch and stop my stitch. This sucker is huge. It's 13 blocks by 13 blocks. And this is my ginormous... Uh, here, we'll flip it down so they can see the other side. Yeah. So it's 13 by 13, and it's just humongous, 
and it's for my for me on the couch when I just wrap myself up and I'm loving it. You and Seamus get under there and enjoy the day. Yep. So it's a temperature Rob Peter to pay Paul. Yes. Temperature blanket kind of thing. It's I mean, and I like it because it's heavy. I like a heavy blanket, and it's just, it's all mine. I wish I had a big blanket. Uh, yours is coming. <laughs> Yay! Jerk side for it. <laughs> all right, so this was on my backlog, and it's been several months. When did I actually start this? Summertime, I think. Is this one we put in the front window and it looked like stained glass? Yep. Okay. And that was like in... It was like late fall. Yeah. Late fall that I did it. And so now I'm going to... It's finished. Keep, I, I have a couple of things. Like, I still owe your friends stuff. Like, hey, I need you to do this, you know, shorten this bandana for me. Oh, oh Kathy's need... bandana. Robin's bag. Her bag. Big. Yeah. Bag. Our friend Robin just started a... Needlepoint. And she's doing very, very well at it. Is it needlepoint or cross stitch? Cross stitch? What's the difference though? Leave it in the comments. She's doing something that takes a needle and she does really cool stuff. Um, Is that hand embroidery? No, I think it's cross stitch. Cross stitch. I think you're right. Um, she's making some cool stuff, some inappropriate stuff, which makes me chuckle about, you know, just. Fun stuff. No, you know what? So, when you say inappropriate, so weren't we just watching um, a podcast and there's a something Susie, something Su Susan, there's a there's a famous quilting block and it has this little, it looks like a the pro, side profile of that little doll, Susie, Susan, something. And back in the 70s, they, um, these, this, this group of women in a, um, in a guild got together and put her on an adventure where she got, she got killed multiple times, was taking drugs, and when they presented it in this, this exposition, it was so controversial that they ended up turning it around So and people had to ask permission to see it. I don't know what this is. Like, maybe I missed... Is it a quilt? Is it a doll? It was... It was a... Uh, the guild made a quilt. Okay, there it is. So I missed that So with each part. of the panels, the little Susie um, character, she was put in some non-traditional roles. Delicious. And it was it was funny. Like you have a nun in a bar. You yeah. have like they just they went full throttle with it. And that's kind of the, the great thing about that art. If Robin's going to do the same thing, it's just like yeah, when I say inappropriate, I mean, there's I forget it was something about doing cocaine in the bathroom and it's stitched like that. But if I was ever going to do cross stitch, I would do like some Tom of Finland. I think there's some Tom of Finland cross stitch out there, which all right. Don't look it up, people. If you know You're what, encouraging if, them. If you, if you know what it is already, look it up. If you don't, don't. Uh, we yeah. needed a drink on that one. <laughs> I did. Now I don't want... I'm about to cut that part out. Mine's coffee. Don't look up that. All right. So, yeah. And actually, you know what? There was a guy on the bus today on the way home. He kind of looked down and out. And he had this thick journal. And he was just hunched over and he was kind of being secretive, but he had like four different pens in his hand <clears throat> and he was just drawing in the sketchbook. And he didn't look like a young artist. He looked like he was middle aged, just kind of down and out, but he was like very furious. And like he, and I was like, you know what? One, I'm glad he's occupied. <laughs> Two, I love that he's doing this because, you know, like when you're, you're you're sketching, you know, it it there's no better way to express yourself. It when, takes you away from things. Yeah, well, there are better ways of expressing yourselves depending on the person. But I loved. I mean, like for the UX industry, that's how they, you know, that's how they ideate. You know, they they sketch and they dream, and it's like 
I loved what he was doing. And then me being a jerk, I'm like, oh, you have all this real estate. And I'm thinking to myself, why is he was like focused on this one little area? And I mean, like he must have done that for like 20 minutes in this area. And it was like he had this all this white space that was available. And I'm like, who am I to critique him? Yeah, especially if you're quilting something, you're quilting in that little area. You're not like... So I don't understand why you didn't get that because I thought you would have been like right away like, oh, I get your, all the detail that you're trying, trying to put in this little section. Well, I don't even know why I was, I mean, like I was thinking of how I would have controlled the pen and how I would have used that space, you know, like, but he was really, I mean, then like I'm trying to steal glances and he was very, very meticulous in what he, what, what he was doing. But it seemed like every, every so often when I would go to check on his progress, he was he really wasn't making any progress. Like it kept being the same thing. And I was thinking about that. Like this is my interpretation as an mm -hmm. outsider. And I was thinking, do I get blocked like that? Do I get like when I'm when I'm trying to create and when I'm trying to um, design or come up with an idea? Do I get myself boxed in and forget to take the rest of the space and just keep dreaming bigger and bigger? Yeah. That was, I mean, like, that, that's where my mind was wandering. It's like when you see a mistake, you only focus on that mistake and not everything else that's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even on this thing, there's things that I'm not, like, 100%, like, I wouldn't want to try to put this in a show, but I love it. It's for me. You know, this was my expression, and, you know, if anything... You learn. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. We're still learning. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? Okay. I don't. Tell me. So, uh, for you quilters out there, I wholeheartedly recommend um, Amanda Murphy, uh, Good Measure Rulers. I have got this the, the set, but for this quilt, I used... Um, Actually, we'll do it that way. Um, I used the inside, and that measured what two and a half, two and a half inches finished. So all I did was I would drop my needle, do a stay stitch, go around two or three times, depending on my mood, and then I would lock the stitch, and then I would trim, and then I'd have to go and move over. It was starting and stopping, but I love these rulers because there's on the back there is a um, there's a frosting, but it's it's got texture, and it actually wants to grab the fabric, and I don't have to put any extra little um, sticky tacks on the back of the ruler, which will actually raise the ruler. This all the complete surface is grabbing the fabric, and I just absolutely love it. So I nice. used this this size for all of the circles, all 365. I think I'm going to go back <clears throat> and then use the smaller one. I'm going to put little circles inside some of the other circles. I might put them um, dead center. I might offset them with some differences. But I just want to keep coming back and, and give it more oomph. Um, oh, and another thing. Uh, and there's more. And there's more. So I don't have any of it up here, but I used for the first time for the binding, um, I used Arfil monofilament um, invisible thread, which is, it's nylon. And that was a first, and that was uh, a learning experience too, because that, it's almost like fishing line. And I had to... Um, lower the tension because the regular tension was making it like want to curve like I was getting waves so I took it all out lightened up the tension and it just wants to lay smooth now but and the uh, the other thing is that you cannot go full speed using a nylon thread I had to set my speed down anywhere between 50 and 75 percent uh, max and that was the right that was the right speed, the right tension, and I wasn't getting any thread breaking. I was really, really glad I used it. It was a good experience. I Again, love it. I learned. Learning's fun. 
when it's something you want to learn. Yep. So, okay, so that's what I made that. Aaron, you made that? I did. I made a couple things. So, uh, we already went through the Mercer Muff I made for Bobby Sue. And let's check out what we have here. Freshly blocked mother's birthday is coming up next week. I don't think I've even touched it. And um, I made this. Will you hold that real quick? This is the Tracy Shaw by Hokey Locatelli. And it was one of those deals because I think you saw the last episode. I made my sister the Jody Shaw. And if I bought... It smells ooh. weird. It does smell weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mo- I'm sorry. Yet. Mother, next to mother's my not going to like this. <laughs> now, no, uh, I used some we'll soak it, stuff. So. And then there's threads here. Okay. Hold on. So this is the Tracy Shaw. I got the Jody Shaw. If you bought them both together, you got a discount. So I made my sister one, and this is it. So um, this is your sister's? No, this is my mother's. And so I made this. You're 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 making me look like an asshole. <laughs> so uh, I just blocked it. It really doesn't have a smell. It's just it's off. Not, it's not all the way dry yet. It's off. I don't know. It smells like off. No, <laughs> like it's, the bug spray. No, like it's um. It, it, it went off. Okay. And it's a little, uh, what do they call it, asymmetrical? It's bigger on this side than it is on this one. But um, it's really cool. I like it. So the colors, I went to my local yarn store, Serial Knitters. Is that an L-Y-S? I love, yes, an L-Y-S. Serial Knitters, which is a very cool yarn store. All the ladies in there are great. And this is... Uh, they actually have their own yarn called Dye House Yarns, which I'll put in here. And I have this much left. It took 400 yards on one, 380 yards of the other. And I think this one right here, which is a greenish with a bunch of speckled colors, is Snorkel Ted. If you look right there. Very pretty. Snorkel Ted, which I really liked. And this other one is called Ooh Oak. O O A K computer. Pronounce O O A K. I pronounce that uak, but text to speech is always improving, and I might not have it quite right. Great, uak. So, and this was kind of a white and one. It had a lot of, sp- not sparkles, but a lot of little splashes of color in it. So that one is. Let me see if I can get what it is. Is hand wash flat. Da 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 da. Uh, single fingering six seven. And it just says Merino Superwash. And this one says, sorry, Cherry Creek Sock, 80% Superwash and 20% Nylon. Um, one thing about this one, for some reason, after knitting for a while, it seemed like, you know how you see dust kind of in the air? I felt like little things were kind of flying around every once in a while. But I like the look of it. So hopefully my mom will be all right with it because... We talked about different colors to do. Usually she's grays and greens, but we, uh, I said, I'm going to try something different. And I think her name is Sue at the store. Help me find it. Cause I found this and I go, what goes with this? And she found this color in here. She done good. She did very well. But one thing about it, I used my Zing needles, but there's a lot of parts that I had to get my needle. Sorry, I came up with the wrong thing. Getting my needle really in there. So there was a few times that I unscrewed half of the zing and I put on my Lika five-point needle because it has a sharper point. So I kind of had metal on the side and wood on this side going back certain ways to get the little box stitches right here. Ooh. But yeah, I think it's cool. I like it. So, so you're not opposed to fingering weight? I'm not opposed to it. This went pretty quick. Cool quick i think because and i think it kept my interest because there was a lot of stuff that i haven't done before like i was well like i've never made anything kind of like this section right here which wasn't super complicated i won't say what it is because the pattern is a paid for pattern but um it kept me kind of it kept me more interested if i just did something that was like back and forth back and forth so it is all garter stitch though so there wasn't much purling and stuff like that but yeah i am excited to get it in the mail and get it sent to ohio and hope you mean it might actually make her birthday yes i think it will 
Wow. I think about, and I didn't weave in the ends because I don't weave in my ends before I block. I do it after blocking. And I think that's all I have. The octopus, the mercer muff, and that. So that's all I have for, you made that? That's it. That's, that's it. it. So let's move on to, what are you making? What am I making? Well, I, um, I have two choices where to move next. Well, actually, I have more than that because I've got, I have catch up to do. So, like Robin's headband, Kathy's headband, Kathy's headband, Robin's bag, which I picked the fabric for, and I'm so nervous. And uh, I've got that one hanker. Um, chip that I have to do from for a co-worker's friend that I've been sitting on for six months. So I want to get those little things just like off my plate. Yeah. But then either I do another black uh, backlog item or I start your quilt. And I think I'm leaning towards getting the backlog. I'll accept that. So I'm fine with that. the next backlog is the drunkard's path. <clears throat> Where'd that come from? What do you mean, where did it come from? My cough. Oh. I was like, you know why I made this. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so if you remember, we have... I might want to undo it a little bit more. The whole thing? No. Mm, no. So, that's enough. Grab that side. There we go. Okay. So we have this one, and this is a king-size quilt. So... For my king size boyfriend. For my king size boyfriend. <laughs> uh, so, like, this needs to go on the long arm. We don't have a long arm. Yes, you do. I'm sorry. What's happening? What is that? Oh, I I consider a long arm. No. The thing that you do this no. and there's so there's stuff. this debate of what is a long arm, what is a mid arm. Like, a lot of people will call when you're doing at a at a table. Like a mid arm, okay, but it's the same machine as if you would do it this way. It's the same machine, so a long arm is a long arm. Okay, other that's my belief. You can hold your own um, by stitch wall uh, <laughs> terms, but no. So that needs to go on the long arm. Awesome. Yeah, and after that, um, then I've got. I think I may have already talked about this. Um, this one's for you. It's the Allison Glass Spectrum. That'll be the next one. I actually have to do the piecework on it. Is that upside down? Uh, Meh. Yeah, we'll do it sideways. Meh. Okay. So there's that. And you're going to get um, the 84 by 90. That's pretty large. It's a very large. It's like the. It's it's like this one. Okay, but we're gonna do you a very large one for the sofa, so that when you can't sleep, you at least have a big blanket downstairs. Some of us have insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny. So that is what I'm gonna be working on. Good. I can't wait. Are you gonna show the fabric or is that nah. for something else? Nah. Well, when when, I, you, when you get there. Yeah. When I get All right. there. My hair is like. Weird. You're gorgeous. You're just gorgeous. Is it? Is it me? Mm-hmm. Uh, before we go any further, look what my boss got me. If I'm sitting, I'm knitting. When did you get that? I think she got it me for me right before Christmas. Very nice of her. Oh, and what do you think of the set? We kind of just moved up to our upstairs living room. Uh, it's we're gonna think it's. Easier for us to do. More room. The only problem is that I don't have anywhere to hang my... Quilts. Quilts. So we have to stand up. And you have to see us stand up and stuff. But More exercise. It's it's basically the record room where we listen to records and quilt. And, well, I listen to records. And the records will change every month and all that good stuff. But we have, we have Billie Holiday, The Good Life, Ghost, Pavement, Stevie Wonder, and Derek and the Dominoes this month. Very superstitious. And while we're at it... Riding on the wall. If you're watching this for the first time, welcome. If you want to like and subscribe, please do. Tell your friends. I mean, people are always like, we love watching you. 
don't don't keep us all to yourself. Tell people about us. <laughs> and we have an Instagram. Just go to Fiber Hustle and hit that follow button. All that good stuff. This sounds like a shameless plug. But no, but we, we actually usually, we're we up usually, to like six hundred subscribers. I know six hundred. We usually don't uh, say the whole like and subscribe and thing. But yeah, find us here. Find us on Instagram. Tell your friends. I put a thing up on Instagram a couple weeks ago. It says, tell your friends, tell your enemies. And somebody said that they don't want to tell their enemies. They want to keep us off of themselves. Aww. Which I think is so sweet. But tell your friends. Whatever. All right. Okay. So I've had a cup of coffee now. I'm ready for some go-go juice. Oh, my gosh. You're always ready for some go-go juice. So let's get... Do you need to disappear and me talk to the camera by myself? I'm a little nervous. To talk by yourself? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go get some go-go juice. It's going to be another moment like when, who was it? Cindy Brady won, won that contest and she was on the television show and the light turned red and she was just like, yeah. So that's why I feel like, okay, so I made another. It's been a long day. This is, <laughs> but can you use a cool one, huh? Red Bull. Sugar free. It's been a long day. Twenty ounce. <laughs> Great. Um, I I'm make... the picture of health. <laughs> you are. You are that gym membership lasted how long? So I'm making Chip the dotted Ray Shaw for Christmas, and he made me the quilt. Bigger, bigger. I thought I was finished because it's about well, it's bound off, not bound off, but kind of tied up right now. And I said, hey, I think I'm about finished. How about you come over and put it around? He's like, oh, no, 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 no. He goes, I need it big. So I go, basically, you want me to make you a blanket? He goes, no, just make it bigger. So if you saw this yarn again, this is from Yarn and You, our friend Janine down in Vancouver, Washington. And this colorway is The Wizard Will See You. It's a DK weight. I asked her to please dye me three more skein, Hanks skeins. So Hanks. it's going to be double this. It's going to be bigger. I'm going to love it. Well, I know you are. This but... is not, I mean, like, this is not going to be for going out. This is me, this is for me around the house. <laughs> Just around the house. <laughs> That's an expensive. I just picture you in, like, whitey tighties and just this on. Which Maybe. You, which you don't wear around the house, but. Um, but yeah, so I am currently on this. I We don't see, we're going to the sewing expo in end of February. There are the tickets. tickets came in today. Sewing expo. Oh, that's not good. What? I just showed our address. Oh, okay. We'll put that out. <laughs> so well, no, at the so end wait, of February, wait, 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 beginning wait, wait. of March. And I was just going to say, we're going to see Janine there. And that's when I'm going to pick up the rest of the yarn. So this is going to kind of stay on this for at least a good while before that even comes. Why do we have so many? How many days are we going to this So thing? there's two. One for you, one for me. This, these are four-day passes. Oh. Four-day passes. How much can you do at a sewing expo in four days? Uh, I, and I'm taking the Modern Mariner's Compass class. That's kind of fun. How it's, long is that? Like an hour class or what? It's 45 minutes. Okay. So like I want to be able to do a um, Mariner's Compass and I really don't want her tools, but I want her books and hopefully she'll have a deal. Okay. Um, not much knitting classes there. I think there was one that's on a Friday, which I took the day off, but it starts at eight. And this no, is there are knitting classes and you refuse to go. You're quote unquote... If I'm going to take a class, it's not going to be at a sewing expo. It's going to be at uh, Vogue Knitting Live. Which I thought, I swear Vogue Knitting Live is supposed to be in October of this year in Seattle. But then I saw on the website, it's going to be in March of 2020. I mean, I could be dead by then. That's what? so far away. Yeah. So what about March this year? No, that's not 2020. There's nothing happening. This whole year? <laughs> nothing there's Rhinebeck which now I'm kind of like why don't we just go to Knit City it's three hours away drive what, what is that Knit City is the one up in Vancouver I've never been but we need our passports yeah well we have to I think it's in October so either we're going to do Rhinebeck which sounds great in theory but then we got to get on the plane for like six to seven hours are you then we gotta 
<sighs> do stuff. We have friends that live in New York, though, so we're still thinking about it. So either Rhinebeck, Knit City, we'll do something, I think, big this year. Um, I want to go to a quilt thing. There's the one in Oregon and Sisters or whatever. Is it Three Sisters? Three Sisters, Oregon? I think that's in August. We should pick up Carrie on the way down and yes. kidnap her for the weekend. Yes. And, uh, other than that, what else am I making? I finished because I've been doing so much Christmas stuff and working on the shawls and everything else. This is I some have, selfish knitting. <laughs> this is some selfish knitting. I have finished, well, I don't want to take it all apart, one arm on my Marled Mania sweater, Stephen West pattern. Um, it looks a little wonky. It probably is wonky, but we learn from our mistakes. The whole knitting things inside out really uh, is not translated to my brain, so there's going to be mistakes, but it's going to be so awkward that it's going to be awesome. No, but what are you complaining about? What do you mean? Your arm number two. Oh, I think I got what is it, second sleeve syndrome, kind of like people get second sock syndrome. So I just cast on arm number two, and I only got two rows into that. So, and I changed yarn a lot to get this magical effect. And I told I told Chip, I go, um, I kind of just want to make this this one yellow sleeve, just because I didn't want to keep on changing and changing, which won't happen. You like all my fringe, um, but yeah, I came on saying I'm a lot today too. You got to do the work. But I'm going to do the work. I'm going to try to get it done. I think I was talking to Jimmy, who's John Boy New York, who has the Ombre and Sheep's Clothing podcast. And he goes, oh, what are you going to have it finished by? Spring or summer? His sweater that he did the other day was, I mean, the his one that he was wearing. Actually, awesome. he wore it twice. It was so good. Yeah, check out his podcast. All the stuff's awesome. He, he really knits some beautiful stuff. But this is all nitpicks, Hawthorne, just in different colors and... That's what I'm working with, our little tub that I just kind of carry around. So I'm excited. One thing that I did use for the sleeves, I ordered these Chowgu, is it red line or red cord needles? They're 12 inch, which I didn't even know it existed until a couple of months ago to try to do the sleeves. I can't give a really honest opinion right now. I think they are fine, but I got some bit of the arthritis in my thumbs anyways. So knitting them kind of hurts my thumbs. I don't think it's the needles. I just think it's because of the size that they are and not being used to it. So uh, I'm going to try again on this one and see what happens with them. Or if I just, just go to Magic Loop. Because I finished off the cuff on this one with Magic Loop. But knitted it all in this until I got to the cuff. Which is fine. It's just I got bad thumbs. It happens. We move on. We get through the arthritis. We live. And I think that's all for what are you making. All right, yeah, I, I want to finish the sweater. I've got... Uh, I'm yeah. Ready, I'm ready to move on to something else. You finally wore your beige one. I did wear my beige sweater, which looks good. Uh, the very first sweater I knit, it just it comes very low. Like, it's like... All. It's not like you have cleavage. It's all neck. Yeah. So I need to figure out something to wear underneath. It's it. not quite a boat neck. What's a boat neck? Just it's just big. more. Open. Yeah. I should try it on with something like this underneath. But again, as I say almost every episode, my we have had extremely warm temperatures this winter. We've had a very mild winter. So I am wearing my knits and people are looking at me because it's like it's like 52 degrees outside and I got my hat on and my scarf because I make all this stuff and I want to be able to wear it. Right. But it, my office is warm, like I say, and so I can't wear this and then a sweater over it. I just need to move floors or something. But yeah, I'm trying to rock all the knit stuff that I own. But it's really not that cold outside to be wearing this stuff. It is this week. As well, as for those on the West, uh, East Coast, we're sorry about your... Snowmageddon. Uh, my sister said it was going to be like negative 40 wind chill. And that, was like, well, that's not even worth living there. And here, I think it got like the 34 today. High of 51, but night. So, yeah. That's what I'm making. I've got... Um, chills. Uh, oh, oh, my God. Excuse me. 
have you viewers noticed that it seems like every male podcaster has indigestion, <laughs> acid reflux, or something? There's not a male podcaster in the yarn community that you watch that doesn't go belt. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, is there something like I want to like do one of those research studies that all yarn enthusiasts have indigestion or some kind there's of a correlation. weird. There's some kind of correlation. To just, but correlation is not causation. Meaning that you knit or sew or sew or knit does not mean that's the cause for your indigestion, or vice okay. versa. Okay. Correlation is not causation. But maybe it is because maybe you sit awkward when you knit and stuff, and it's doing something to your life. Or when you're sewing, <gasps> I'm gonna do a research study. Why are you? No, that sounds like a lot of work. Okay, so All right. I, I gotta pick up one thing. Okay, I will be here. I have to get my Amazon box. I guess I noticed that Chipazon came again today. But wait, what did you tell me at the beginning of the year this year that you should let our viewers know? I am not shopping anymore. As he opens a box. No. You're not shopping for fabric. You're not going to shop for fabric for a whole year. No, that, that's not going to happen. But I'm curbing it. No, what I had to get, and this is not a product endorsement, is I'm going to try some of these you make me shout, shout color catchers because I'm going to wash. Uh, it is upside down. It has to be. Yeah. And Gene True Love used these. Is that why you got them? Yep. So we were watching Gene True Love, uh, True Love Quilts, 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 on the YouTube, and she was talking about... Like how she washes her um, her quilts, and you never know. Even if it's a, if, even if it's a uh, premium fabric, you never know if the dye is going to run. And especially like with this guy, that is mostly white. Mostly white. I do not want any of that bleeding. So I'm gonna try. They say that you only need like one. Uh, one sheet in the washer. Um, she says six because more is better. But I will let you know how this does when I go to use it. Actually, I want to wash um, the one I just made because that one's got a lot of color and it's got a lot of white. Yeah. So I just, I don't want to. I don't want it to bleed. I don't want it to bleed. I don't want to take the chance that after all that hard work that it doesn't stay. So, we'll give you an update on that. And I got one more thing to talk about. What? So, my make it home. So, like, for you quilters, do you find yourself on your hands and knees? Do you find yourself aggravated? <laughs> when I'm on my hands and knees, no. <laughs> no, so for anybody who does not use a standing free arm, long arm, um, it's hard to pin your quilts, whether oh, okay. you're on a table, whether you're on the floor, it's just, you end up having to pin, repin, unpin, and it's just a mess. So what I've created is we went to the Home Depot and I made six of these. No, I made nine of these. So it ended up being a piece of... PVC pipe, which is in the center, and then I got some foam padding for pipe insulation, and then I did uh, zip ties so that I can actually put three of three of these together, and so I need at least long enough to make a queen, uh, king size quilt. So mm -hmm. that we're talking like 140 inches just to be safe. Because it's 120 by 80, or 120 by, well, depending on whatever the length is, or the width. So, <clears throat> I've done it, and I absolutely love this, because it just rolls. So you take one, pin it, then you take the other one, pin it, so you have three things going at the same time? Yep, so there's three huge rolls, one for the quilt backing, one for the batting, and then one for the quilt top. Okay. And then you put all three on the table... And then you just smooth everything out, and then you're 
Everything's pinned to this yeah, as yeah. it's rolled. And then you just unroll as you're advancing. And you're still on the table, but you're pinning. I wish now that I didn't make the pieces that I had the long lengths, though. Because these want to, with the weight, they want to bend. We were afraid we couldn't get them in the car, so we cut them at the Home Depot. Well, he cut them at the Home Depot. I was like, I was, it was, I was man on fire. And uh, so we should have just tried to put them in the car first, then gone back and cut them. Yeah, because I don't that 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 was like because it was experimentation. Like I could write down the directions now and make it a lot cheaper for people because I tried gluing the inside and then doing the foam. Like, now that I know how to do it. Well, if we do tutorials this year, like we kind of talked about, or fun facts, we're thinking about doing like a thing called side hustle for fiber hustle. Yeah, things that, side hustle, so things that are quilt specific little how to's that or knit reviews of needles and stuff like that just little videos or and... just taking you along on our journey yes journeys are fun but yeah you can totally do that how you made it yeah but i will say even getting to this point has been a lifesaver because i usually ask for your help and you're always like a deer in the headlights <laughs> well i didn't know how much like quilting is like a four person job sometimes knitting is like I'm done, finish, block it. What There's do you a, think of me? <laughs> but, 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 but quilting's always like, I need your help with this, and we got to measure this, and that, which I love you and I love doing. But sometimes our communication with <laughs> laying things and moving no, stuff. No, is... you stand there and you just... Because it's your vision. I can't see your vision. If I hit you over the head with this, you're going to see a vision. Very true, very true going to be a crime of passion when I hit you, because I'd love to hit you. <laughs> uh, that's exciting, though. Like yeah. That. So maybe uh, I might go back and make another one. It's of not. Those it's not cutting it. Yeah. It, I mean, just to make life easier. But then, where do you store it? Like, if you have a 100, 140 inch pole, where are you going to put that? We have a garage. A garage. The garage. The dusty garage? <laughs> the dusty. Dirty, dusty garage. What do you need to go in there for? Not get the lawnmower. I am not going to be playing no bird box this summer <laughs> in the front yard mowing a lawn. That's what I'm telling you for sure. You won't even mow the lawn without the bird box. <laughs> so what makes you think you're going to do that? I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I've got. What do I have? I have some yarns and patterns to show. So... I went to Tote Yarn, which is an amazing yarn store, which is in. Is that the one with Carnation, the wood floors? Washington. Yes, wood floors, everything about it. It's more so comfy chairs. Two of my favorites, and well, I have three favorites kind of in the area. Uh, I like Nifty Knitter, which is an Esquaw, really cute shop. Serial Knitters, which is in Kirkland. Serial Knitters has more of the crazy, like think hedgehog fibers, all that stuff, but they have some calm stuff as well. And then Tolt Yarn seems like they don't have any of the crazy stuff. They have like almost like all natural, like it came directly from the sheep. And they're like, here. What would crazy stuff be? Just like lots of color, lots of tie dye, that kind of stuff. Not tie dye, but lots of speckled. And I think, let's start with this yarn first. Okay, if Tolt was so a this clothing is... store, what would it be? Oh gosh, I have no idea. I can't play that game and I'm going to shop. I don't shop that much. Would it be Banana Republic? Yes, it'd be Banana Republic, not Hot Topic. <laughs> so, uh, basically, like these, think of these kind of colorways at Tolt, like really kind of more natural colors and stuff like that. So, I picked up these. I am going to try with the help of the Strange Brew book that came out from Tin Can Knits, Ooh. with you can have your own recipes and everything. I want to try to make a cow. I want to try to design the own, my own color work on it. And with the Strange Brew from Tin Nuts that came out, I, it's kind of giving me the confidence to read it and write down patterns, stuff like that. So I want the main color on the outside. <laughs> Who is this by first? Le Petit. Is it uh, Le La Petit? Petit. La Petit, Lamb's Wool, uh, Biches and Bouches? Biche, biches, biches and Bouches. Bouches. And this color is, see, like gray beige. So this is wool. This is, yeah, medium gray, dark gray. I mean, it's like blue. 
but they feel good. They look good. Let me throw them under here. No, they're really gorgeous. But yeah, so I want this to be like kind of the bottom and outer color. Then kind of play around with color work with these three. And I actually picked these myself. Do you think they'll go together? Or I don't know. The okay. Yeah, and I got another one of this just in case. So I'm excited to try something. And you're going to make what out of this? I want to make a cow, but I want to kind of do more color work. Not like not Is that going to be a stripes. big cow? No, no, no. no. Like... Uh, like a little bit bigger than this size. All of this is going to be for this size? Well, I can probably make two. Oh. I don't know. I can, I'm hoping that I can make two. So, yeah. I'm excited to try this. I also got when I was there. This is... Oh, can I ask you a question? You may ask away. I love questions. Okay. So if I can answer them. This is wool. Yes. Is this going to get? Is this going to get fuzzy and pill because of your beard? By the time I finish, I might just have my little chin strap. So maybe, I don't know. Yes, it probably will. Let's just say yes. Okay. I don't know what else I can do. I'm. I mean, like, dude. that's. That, that, like, women really don't face this unless you shave. But women really don't. Yeah, I. Like, most of my stuff is kind of all frayed from the little. What do you guys do? I don't know. You're ready for it to go, aren't you? I was talking. It's not as bad I was as talking been to in... Chevy Rell about this a couple of days ago. I said, "Oh, Dan's beard's looking great," and she goes, "Oh, I love his beard." And I go, "Chip usually despises mine." No, because you have it like full man. I mean, like it's bad. Right now, it's bad. No, or it's, getting there. It's like it's it. not bad. Yeah. Oh, and Chevy Rell podcast. We love her. Watch her. She makes me happy. I want to party with her. But she would probably out party me. Okay. So she'll yeah. have her 20 ounce, but <laughs> but a different kind of 20 ounce. That's funny. Um, but yeah, so I also got this. It says, is that Julia, Julie Aslan? And it's, is that Nomad? Mm -hmm. Nomad yarn. And it says pixelated. Now I got this originally to do the Tracy Shaw. But then I was like, I don't know if I should make it all the same color. But I just it, think it's like rock soup. No flavor. This? Yeah. Really? It needs something. But it has like colors in it. And yeah, little... but it's still, it's like rock soup. No flavor. Because it's predominantly that gray color. It needs more, It needs something. Bam. So now I don't my know taste. what to make out of it. It's a fingering way. I mean, socks really, like I always said, socks should <laughs> bless you. My goodness. Thank you. What a big sneeze. Uh, socks have kind of always wanted to make them, but then I feel like I have to make them because I'm a knitter. But then I was watching someone a couple weeks ago. There was just like, if you don't want to make socks, don't make socks. I was like, yeah, yeah. But I felt I felt like I needed to do that to prove that I'm a knitting champion. Or no, something no, no, like that, no, no, no. Which I don't want to do, but I kind of I would like to do a pair anyways someday. But you're you're exploring. Yeah. Like if you were not exploring making hats gloves making scarves mercer muffs a sweater mm -hmm. like you're tasting the rainbow and you're just trying everything it's not like you're locked up in your basement smoking weed and not going anywhere you know like you're not just doing hats and that's all you've ever done and that's all yeah. you ever will do so just like you're, ta you're the tasting top. the rainbow and right now you're not there yeah someday you may i'm really into shawls which is weird but i don't know i think because they're I don't know, this wrap and fit and you can do whatever and if you make mistakes they're fine. If you make them perfect, they're still fine. And like your shawl, there's not one mistake in that. I Better went, not be. I went back and fixed <laughs> everything because I knew you'd be like, Oh, this is what's that? <laughs> what's that right there? But anyways, uh yeah. I like this yarn. Now I just don't know what to do with it since I already made mother shaw and I just gotta find a use for this. I mean I guess I can I don't know. I would find I can make another shot one of these like this blue in here and mix it with it. Like there's a blue in there, and then just like so that there's more about more more more. Okay. Yeah, because this is I mean it's pretty, but to me it's just very it's a, this is not a this show was, this is Yeah, this is more of a hat to me. Okay. I did get a hat pattern somewhere, but I don't know where it is, so I can't show it to you, but it was made for fingering weight. Um, have you guys seen this? It's been out for like a month, I think. 
But I bought this pattern, and it's oh, crazy. <laughs> My gosh, Chip. Ridiculous. I am so sorry. And it is by, is that Maxim? Max? Uh, Maxim Sear. Maxim Sear. Um, love his glasses. Love his whole look. But this, uh, maybe the camera is upside down, which is weird. So See how he brushes this... his beard? <sighs> <laughs> See how there's no one yelling at him? <laughs> but yeah, I love this fox sweater. I know he's working on a couple other oh designs. God. So I, I would love to make this. Do you have Very, the pattern? It, yes, I bought the pattern because I saw it and I had to have it. Uh, that was I a, just, a so, legitimate had to have it. I like so if we do go to Rhinebeck, maybe I can try to make this because it's pretty baller. I mean, I wish I had. The, sorry, I know I'll get the skills. I almost said I wish I had the skills to make that, which I know I can. It's just going to take a lot of practice. And I showed a couple people this. They're like, it's great. It's a little ambitious for color work because there's like some of these have multiple colors in the same row. Because a lot of color work, I think, is just like two colors, but this has multiple colors. But I'm pretty excited about it. But you know what? If I can make it. You are fastidious. What's that, Tim Gunn? You know, the big words that you're like, big word, computer day. Computer. What does fastidious mean? The adjective fastidious is usually defined as excessively particular, critical, or demanding, hard to please. I am not that. In your own work. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think that even if you're slow go, mm -hmm. you you can do it. Okay. I believe in you. Thank you. For Fox's sake. For Fox's sake. And then I don't know when I want to start this. I kind of started a little workout regimen. I'm not going hardcore just to drop some LBs because the you bigger make... you are, the more yarn you have to buy, which is fine, but... Whatever, we're not getting that conversation. But no, you can make it for me. <laughs> it's very true, very true. And Jimmy, John Boy, New York, uh, for my birthday, gifted me a brio sweater by Stephen West. Let me see if I can brought that out. Which upside down? Upside down again. We'll have to see. It. And I think it's really cool. I've never tried brioche before, but I want to at least try brioche. I will probably try. Uh, well, what the heck does that mean? Try like a hat or something. Brioche is like it's kind of like a double knitting, I think. So see how like see in there. It's like a rib double knitting kind of thing. I don't know the depth. Uh, computer, what is brioche? The noun brioche is usually defined as a light, sweet bun or roll made with eggs, yeast, and butter. So yeah, it's an eggs, yeast, and butter sweater. It's going to look really good. You should do a sweater for with arms that come down to here so that they just hang. I think Stephen West just did a sweater that had ex extra length arms. Because it's just it's just like, oh my God, what is that? It's almost like a straight jacket. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over. Yeah. Or one of those inflatable yeah. car sales things. Yeah. Okay. Don't do that in the doors. <laughs> <laughs> you know I got to shake it every episode. But that's what I have for Had the Habits. Yeah. Great. You need to drink some more Red Bull. Your energy's going down. Okay. Drink your medication. Shelby, drink your juice. Drink your <sighs> juice, Shelby. Mm. I like it because it's lightly carbonated. <laughs> nice. For me, knit pretty someday. I don't know what I'm going to do, honestly. I want to finish this sweater sleeve, and that's all I am focused on at the moment. I got to finish it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I got to do. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um, all right. So you've already seen me so pretty someday. Mm hmm But we are going to... We're talking about having a fishbowl. Of ideas for ourselves, and we have to pull from the fishbowl. Do I pull yours and you pull mine? Well, we can do that. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody follows the Dude Quilter on Instagram, but I follow him, and like I think I was like a month ago, he posted a story. He has a uh, he has some cool quilts. He uh, 
had a bowl and it said is like not progress bowl what is it called like a dream like bowl? a dream bowl or something basically he wants to do something he writes it down throws it in his bowl so basically if i had these sweaters in there i'll throw in the bowl and i'm like oh what next pick it out of the bowl adding my hands you said you wanted to do it yeah at one time i wanted to do it so yeah yeah i am i'm all for that because i've i, I mean obviously i've acquired um quite the stash mm-hmm and I had inspiration that came with each of those, and it's like, okay, let's let's put the pedal to the metal. And I don't. I, I learned from the Stitch uh, podcast. If you uh, haven't, you should watch them. If you are in uh, uh, quilting, Lynn and Pam. Lynn and Pam. Uh, I like to stash quilt. Yes. And. Whereas, okay, so like, Lynn likes to stash quilt. Pam likes to scrap quilt. So like, she makes, she like she is constantly making something from all of her scraps. Whereas, uh, Lynn, she likes to stash. Like, oh, what have I got in my stash? And she'll pick like all kinds of things that that it's not like little pieces that she's trying to put together. I'm more that way. So I have amassed quite the stash and it's like well i had plans for it so like let's make let's start making things and and having plans for it yeah definitely helps yeah definitely so yeah so i think we should do that yeah i'll do it now do i draw for you and you draw for me or does it matter i don't think it matters but once it's out it's out okay you you can't put it back and say "Ooh, i'm not ready (laughs) well like i don't want to if I put this in and we draw tomorrow, I'll be like, oh, time to work on your sweater. You know what? Then swallow it up, Buttercup. Well, I want to, but we just okay. Yes, you could sell it. You could sell it. True. Very true. Very true. No, I'm excited. I'm excited for 2019 knits. Yeah, because I have I have some and ideas. Crochets. I have ideas. I got ideas. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's all I got. That's all I got. Like, subscribe, chime in, comment, question. And if you don't see us, nag. Yeah, (laughs) nag. We're going to, we always say we're going to be consistent, but I mean, 2019, New Year. No, we just made January. We just made January. Our pod anniversary, our birthday, we don't know what we're going to call it, is in March. Is it? Yeah. We should have to do a giveaway of some kind and send these people on a scavenger hunt. I really want to do them a scavenger hunt for to win prizes. Do you know what that looks like? Not yet, but it's going to be insane. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate you, and we will see you very soon. See you next time. Bye. Bye. More juice. More juice. That was fun.